Hello and welcome to the Blank Potato. This horror story is uploaded by Reddit user Jam Friends. If you want to learn more about the author, link in the description. The title of this next story is The Gift. Before we start, I would just like to invite you to please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and click that notification bell so you won't miss any of my future uploads. So, get comfy and let's begin. My wife Mercedes travels a few times a year for business and she'd always bring me back a souvenir of some sort, a corny t-shirt, a magnet, a keychain. But on this last trip, she brought back something else entirely and it's ruined our marriage, if not our lives. We've been together for almost two decades, but our routine after she returned from a trip was always the same. I'd meet her at the airport, she'd text when she landed, and give me a running hug in the baggage claim. I tried to help her with the bag, which she always refused, even when it weighed more than she does. We'd share everything we did in our days apart, from the exciting to the mundane. This last time was different. She'd call me the night before her flight. We exchanged the normal, I love yous, but that was the last normal thing that's occurred in my life since. She never texted me that she made it in. I was at the baggage claim. People had already gathered. Bags were coming out. But Mercedes just wasn't there. I waited. I texted. I called. Nothing. With every moment that went by, I grew more and more worried. At first, I wondered if she'd never actually made it to the airport, but saw her baby blue suitcase slowly circle by. Unsure of what else to do, I kept calling, until I finally heard her ringtone coming from nearby, audible over the conversations and whirring of machinery now that most people had cleared out. That's when I noticed her for the first time. She'd been on the other side of the machine the entire time. She was unrecognizable. As I approached her, she looked past me, as if I were a stranger. Her hair was messy and matted to her face. Her clothes were stained, and she had rough and jagged cuts at the corners of her mouth, bruises beginning to bloom across her jaw. She stared emotionlessly into the distance as her bag passed by us multiple times didn't even comment when I finally grabbed it. In the privacy of our car, I tried to ask her if she was okay, what had happened. Clearly something was wrong, but on her end, the ride home was silent, pierced only by a wet sounding cough she developed. For a while, after we returned home, she seemed better and more like herself. There would be those rough moments when she'd fall back into that confused and disheveled state. But they were brief. As time went on, though, the lapses became longer. We'd be mid-conversation. She'd be mid-laugh when her face would go slack. She was gone again. Eventually, she'd wander around as if lost in her own home. She would forget where she was and who I was. I'd never seen her stare up the ceiling for hours at a time. She stopped eating, but she still looked healthy enough. I called our doctor, and he was as concerned as I was, but she absolutely refused to go see him. Every few nights since she's been home, like clockwork, Mercedes leaves the house and slides out into the darkness. Anytime I would bring it up, if she was even aware enough to register my words, it result in an argument. She still straight up denies that she's even leaving at all, but our video doorbell says otherwise, and that terrifies me because of the deaths that have begun plaguing our town. The first body was found two weeks ago. My buddy Ron's wife is a police officer and told me he heard it almost look like an animal attack based on the sheer brutality. It wasn't long before the old Mercedes my Mercedes was gone entirely. She'd have the occasional moment where she seemed to recognize me, but there was no longer any of her gentleness or humor left behind those eyes. 
Instead, in the rare moments of clarity, I felt as if observed by a predator calculating their next move. Not long after, her boss called the house because she has stopped showing up to work entirely. It sounded like she wasn't the only one of her co-workers to do so. Since then, she's gotten only worse. On top of her deteriorating psychological state, her physical health hasn't improved either. In fact, she's began coughing up concerning things like writhing long strips of something and bits of cloth and hair and teeth. I don't think they were her own either. I think I finally found out where she's going and who she's with and it's worse than I ever could have imagined. About a week ago, I awoke gasping, struggling to catch my breath. Mercedes was kneeling on my chest, prying my mouth open with both hands with such ferocity that I kept expecting to hear a sickening crack. She stared at me with a purposeful and intense focus, eyes wild and dilated, only inches from my own. I remember feeling waves of searing pain, almost as if something was boring its way through my soft palate. I tried telling myself it was just a vivid nightmare, but my jaw ached so much the next morning, and I've developed a headache since then that still hasn't gone away. Our marriage has been falling apart, and the situation in town has gone from bad to worse too. They found another body in the park near our home just a few days ago. Ron told me he heard that they'd ruled out a robbery. The victim was still wearing her diamond earrings, well, one at least, on the half of her head that wasn't missing and clutching a purse that was full of cash. I'm starting to wonder if they'll even solve any of these cases. The last time I saw Ron's wife in town, in a departure from her usual friendly nature, she walked right past me with a now familiar look of detached vacancy on her face. If that weren't bad enough, I don't even have my health. I think whatever Mercedes has, I've caught it too. I can't shake the feeling that there's something wet lodged deep within my lungs that I can't get out. Sometimes, I even swear it feels like it's moving. The coughing, coupled with the searing pain at the base of my skull, has made the past week unbearable. According to our doorbell footage, I've recently joined Mercedes when she leaves at night. But I don't remember a single moment of it. I realize I'm losing track of hours at a time. Our daughter, Fallon, came home for a few days during spring break recently. I could have sworn I told her not to come, that her mom and I were sick and I didn't want her to catch it, but she told me I called non-stop and that I actually begged her to come home and see us. Before she went back to her shared dorm room, she had begun acting oddly, walking around looking dazed and started to develop the same cough as her mom and I. Now that I think I've found out what my wife is doing at night. I'm terrified of the thought of what will happen now that my daughter has just returned to a college campus packed with people. There's something else that scares me too that I haven't told anyone else. This morning, I finally thought I was getting better when I managed to cough something up. But then, I saw what it was long squirming things and a single ornate diamond stud earring. I know something is terribly wrong, but I don't know what to do about it. If you enjoyed that horror story, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and click one of the videos here for more horror stories like that. And as usual, I'll see you again next time. You have a creepy evening.